Welcome, Aries, to your October 2023 horoscope. My name is Jeff. I am your professional astrologer here at Raise Your Vibration TV, and we are going to go over the energies that are available to you this month. And we've got a big month coming up. This is eclipse season, so we're going to talk extensively about that. We're going to talk about a lot of things that are shifting you know, October gears itself up. This is Libra season, moving into Scorpio season. So the energy shifts here. And if you look at the seasons and how they display themselves, how nature displays them, you can see the parallels between your personal life and what's going on now. We are moving into the fall, okay? So with you, Aries, with everything happening in Libra season, you know, this is opposite your sign. So this could be a tough time for you this this time of year, you know, um, and it's a huge focus on relationships. So October is always the time that it's always a focus on relationships. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at your chart for the month. So you see how all these planets, again, all these retrograde planets, boom, one, two, three, four, I count Chiron in there and the North Node, plus these, you know, Jupiter and Uranus. A lot of slowing down. You know what I mean? It's a good time to review though, but the focus is going to be in your seventh house of relationships, the public, that kind of thing. You know, healing relationships, giving too much of yourself to others, getting some perspective on that also this month. Um, and And really expressing yourself especially at the beginning of the month. Um, but you can see where the, where the main set of energies take place, and it's a balance between your first and second houses. It will be um, second houses as the month progresses and then moves into the eighth. Um, once we get to the calendar view, we'll be able to see the more the travel of the sun, but it's probably going to end up right about here at the end of the month. All right? Because we move in to Scorpio on the 23rd of October. So it's going to shift. This energy is going to shift late month. I always, well, kind of late month, mid month, however you want to look at it. But we've got the first and seventh house issues. Um, and like I said, it's about individuality, you know especially with it, with this, with your ruler being in, in Libra, it's trying to like not, try not to force balance in your life, but take action to acquire it, you know, and it's going to take action from you. But there's a part of yourself that needs to heal in order for this to move forward in your relationship sector, you know? So that's going to be the focus this month. You know, it, it almost seems like it's a pattern, Around this time, it's it could be a challenging time for you, but it can also be an awakening, you know, because you are one of the signs that is the beginning of the seasons. You start spring, and then we got cancer that you're square to that starts summer, and then you're opposite Libra in the fall, and then you're square Capricorn in the winter. So you can see the pattern that you can almost get ready to embrace, you know, from like from your birthday all the way up into the first of summer, you have a growth period and then you start to bloom. And then there's, you know, again, it's a cycle. Then there is a fall and then there's like almost like a cold, almost like a hibernating kind of getting used to. And then all this getting all of a sudden, boom the cycle repeats. You know what I mean? So you can always be in sync with this. And because you're an Aries, you're a cardinal sign. You can tap into these times of year, the, these times of the year to be your most effective, to really take action in these certain areas of your life. So it's going to be first, second house issues, seventh, eighth house issues. First is, you know, what about my feelings? What about, you know, my needs compared to yours, I'm always giving to you and you're never giving back, you know, pull your energy back this month. If you have to Aries, you know, 
It's a time to restructure your relationships and it's a good time to review and get rid of all this mental clutter. You know, Saturn is creating obstacles in your subconscious. Neptune is saying, you know, listen, we got to work past our illusions here. All right. So that was a lot, (laughs) but let's go ahead and move to the calendar view. So as you can see, I always track the moon's movements. Of course, their aspects to other planets Um, and We've got our solar eclipse and our lunar eclipse happening. And those are, you could look at super new moon and a a super full moon, okay? It almost intensifies. Eclipses bring drama to these new and full moon periods in October. Um, But let's go ahead and get through the week, all right? So we start off Jupiter and the moon making a good conjunction together. Mercury on Monday, opposite Neptune, you know, a little uncomfortable here. What do I say? Is there veiled communication? You know, that's the way I can put it here. Then the moon moves into Gemini. You're going to see that the moon moves through the signs pretty fast. Um, Mercury then makes a trine to Pluto, so it can almost smooth over any communication problems that happen on Monday the 2nd. Wednesday is a big day. That's the fourth. That is when Mercury, the planet of communication that has been making, you know, a hard aspect here and then a soft aspect, kind of good day, bad day kind of thing, communicating. It's now going to be moving into the sign of Libra. And that's a big deal because when planets move into different signs, they take on the flavor of those signs. So Mercury could be moving into Libra. Well, it's not, it couldn't, it is moving into Libra, not could. But the overall energy for it is communicating balance. What's fair? You know, maybe speaking your truth, you know, speaking love language almost. I mean, that's what I would call it too, is expressing your love language. So when Mercury moves into Gemini, we move into an air element. So it's all about communication. All right. Um, October 6th and 7th look good. Moon's going to be in Cancer and then moves over into into Leo, my sign. And that's a great weekend anytime that happens. Um, Sunday is a big deal too because Venus, the planet of love, is moving into the sign of Virgo. So now this Libra's ruler is going to be moving into Virgo, which is a more Earth sign, more practical. You know, let's... What are my needs? What are my values? How can I make this work? Mars is also squaring. Your ruler is also squaring Pluto. So that may be a a tumultuous time with relationships on the 8th, okay? Maybe expect to see some big news in the news too, some unexpected news. Um, The moon makes a square to Uranus on the 9th. And then 10th, on the 10th, we have Pluto going direct after all these months of being retrograde. So now it's going direct. The moon moves into Virgo and Venus is opposite Saturn. So again, our values are being tested more in a realistic way, perhaps on the 10th. Uh, The moon makes a nice trine to Jupiter. So that hump day could be a pretty good hump day. And then the 12th, your ruler... Mars is moving into the water sign Scorpio on the 12th. So now that your ruler, Mars, is moving into a different sign, it takes on a different flavor. This is about emotions, getting down to the depths of things. Scorpio investigates. It makes things happen. Actually, back in the day, Mars used to rule Scorpio. So it's kind of got a double punch on that Thursday, okay? So I, I, I want you to, to take action, but do it in, in how can I say this? It's both passionate right there. So Mars is going to feel a lot better than it has. You know what I mean? In when it was in Libra. So now, now we're making things happen. We're expressing our emotions. You know, the moon will smooth that out on that day because it's moving into Libra also. And then you're, then Mars the next day on Friday kind of gears up for this solar new moon eclipse that's happening. And uh, did I say that? Yeah, solar new moon eclipse. New moon solar eclipse. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway, so we've got your ruler making a trine to Saturn. So, again, we're, we're, we're moving into a different energy, and now all of a sudden you're taking action, you know, 
the the uh, the limitations have been freed almost, and then it goes up to this new moon that's taking place in your seventh house of relationships. So again, this is a focus on relationships, Aries. This could be a new relationship for you. This could be meeting somebody at a at a social gathering. It's getting out there. You know what I mean? It's taking action. It's it's uh, making things happen for you. And with it being in Libra, it's going to be a challenge because maybe that's not what you do, you know. So I, on the 14th, I would highly advise is really taking and assessing your relationships and seeing what you can do. It is a new moon, so it's a perfect time to plant those seeds of desires. You always get that opportunity to do that. And the 14th, that weekend is going to be a great weekend to do that. All right? So with the with it being a solar eclipse these are challenging times but it stimulates growth and these relationship issues need to be tidied up so it's going to be a huge focus on that what's a new way what's a new approach of going about things and because your ruler just moved into the sign of scorpio you're going to get down to the bottom of it so you can find some balance all right so we move through the rest of the weekend. Moon goes into Scorpio, so it can get kind of dark on that day. And then the moon is opposite Jupiter on the 16th. So, you know, trying to move fast, you know, just can't happen. Don't overindulge. Uh, the moon then moves into Sagittarius, so that's a more uh, advantageous for you, you know, at good mood wise, you know, that'll be a good day for you is because it's going into a fellow fire sign. And you can see, like I said, the moon, you know, I, I could easily skip over these because it happens fast, but this kind of almost regulates your day. Like on the 18th, the moon makes a square to Venus. So, you know, we may be a little cranky. We may not be getting what we want. We may not, we may be feeling one way, but want to go in a different direction. So just be aware of that. And then the moon moves into more earthly Capricorn. And then on the 20th, this is when we set up for a big weekend here. We got the sun conjunct Mercury. Good time to express yourself, but it's square Pluto. And then the next day, the sun is going to be squaring Pluto. And when I was taking a look at this, I was like, it's almost like that weekend, it seems like it could be a challenge for you to go ahead and make things happen. I think that new moon sparks it in you. And then as we move forward that weekend, it's about making things happen. Pluto is going to be trying Jupiter on the 22nd. Mercury moves into the sign of Scorpio. So you can see how fast it moves through that those signs. We were there on the 14th in Libra, and now all of a sudden we're into Scorpio. It's lining up for Scorpio season. And then the sun on the 23rd moves into Scorpio. Now that's my rising sign, so we'll see how that goes, because then we get the lunar eclipse coming up that week. It seems like an okay week, you know, it, it starts to become that October feel, that fall, that Halloween time, you know, it starts to get a little spooky. And it's no coincidence that the sun is in Scorpio at that time because that's when things get spooky. <laughs> but we've got the moon moving into Pisces, the sun making a great aspect, a trine to Saturn on the 24th. The moon makes a lovely conjunction to Neptune, great dream times, nice day to day dream. And then we take some action Thursday and Friday. We're like almost getting ready to move into this lunar eclipse. Now, the full moon illuminates things. With a lunar, lunar eclipse, it really puts the heat on things. That's when this is a full moon on steroids. But it, it is happening in the sign of Taurus on the 28th at 5 degrees. Again, I forgot to mention that. 21 degrees happening on the new moon. Check your chart for that. And now with the lunar eclipse on the 28th, check it at 5 degrees Taurus. I have, uh, I believe... Saturn sitting seven degrees in my seventh house in Taurus. So this lunar eclipse is going to be highlighting my relationships. For you, Aries, it's going to be highlighting your second house of finances. 
So I wanted to make a note of a couple things. Number one, Mars is going to be opposite Jupiter. So it is not a good time to make purchases, Aries. It is not a good time at all. It's also not a good time to demand anything that day. I'm going to tell you, the energy is hyped on a full moon and especially on a lunar eclipse. So, I mean, we want to back off. Again, it's happening in a in an earth sign. So it's about know what to say and what not to say. You know, because Jupiter just wants to get it all done. And this energy kind of makes you feel very antsy. I want you to get grounded with this full moon and release that antsiness. What's the rush? You know what I mean? With, again, that new moon is teaching us balance, and now we got the full moon kind of like digging our heels. And with Aries, that's going to be a challenge for you. But it's going to be happening in your second house of finances, maybe trying to dial down debt, maybe too much focusing on debt. Release your debt. I release the, my debt. I, l- I allow the universe to pay, for, you know, to bring the money forward. You know what I'm saying? But this full moon is an excellent time to let things go. Maybe you're being too rigid in your beliefs and this full moon is trying to illuminate that, you know? Maybe you're being too rigid on your finances or just a lack mentality. This is when you got to let that go, all right? And then we finish out all the way till Halloween. Halloween looks like a good time. Good time to throw a party. That's for sure. If you're going to throw a party, do it on the 28th. If you're having a Halloween party, do it on the 28th. Just don't go overboard. You know what I mean? Have a good time. Be practical about it. That's why it's in the sign of Taurus, to be practical. All right. Aries, that's October. It gets it gets balanced. Things get moving, you know, and then all of a sudden it gets kind of creepy. So, Get prepared for this. That's why we do these forecasts. And I hope this resonates with you. I hope that that helps you throughout your month of October. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Watch your tarot video that will be coming out. The the horoscope video is going to come out first this month because I want them out before the 1st of October. So look for your tarot reading in that first week of October. All right, Aries, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And I will see you in November.